good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am Krista Burns at the Nebraska Library Commission. Um, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event where we cover Commission activities and anything of interest to li Nebraska librarians. Um, we have guest speakers that come in and sometimes we have um, our own NLC staff as we have today. Um, we do these sessions every Wednesday morning, 10 a.m. Central Time Live, and they are recorded. So if you um, are unable to attend a live session, you always have the recording available to you. Uh, this morning, we have, as I said, one of our staff, Michael Sowers, our technology innovation librarian, who is going to um, share some Google secrets with us. That's the plan. That's the plan. Okay, I'm going to pass it on. All right, I'm going to take it away. All right. This is why I love the internet. I can go to something like Flickr, and I, you know, I need a title slide, and I can just uh, put in the word "secrets" and get images like this, uh, <laughs> free for me to use. So, and you know, I just you know, colorful, and you know, just like the Google logo. And I threatened Christy yesterday that I was going to start singing Bohemian Rhapsody. <laughs> and uh, if any of you get that reference, uh, it's a Muppets thing. Just go online and find it. Anyways, uh, I will spare you my singing. Um, <clears throat> uh, I call this Google Secrets only mainly because it's a lot better of a title than stuff about Google you may not already know about, and some of you maybe do. Um, because there's a lot been going on with Google. There's a lot of things. <clears throat> Excuse me. A little frog in my throat. Um, not Kermit. Um, and um, a lot of things going on with Google, a lot of things that they're kind of features that they're hiding, services that they offer that maybe a lot of people don't know about. Um, also, the, the reason I kind of came up with this topic uh, just like last Friday when Krista said, can you do anything next week, um, is that uh, several weeks ago I got one of these new wonderful uh, droid uh, smartphones from Verizon, and it is very Google-centric. In fact, while you're standing there in the store, you have to sign into your phone with your Google account. Yeah. So, oh yeah, um, so uh, my wife had to just sign up for a Google account right then and there, and so I've been teaching her all sorts of stuff with Google, and I've started using a lot more Google services in the last three weeks than, than I had in the past. So what I wanted to do is just kind of go through some of the things that are out there that I can show you. And we've got um, this web page uh, right now. The, the bookmarks are all in my account. Eventually we'll get them over to um, the uh, NLC account. But if you want links to, to all of the resources I'm going to talk about here today, um, you can copy down that URL real quick, delicious.com slash travel and librarian slash Google secrets. And so much so that I even added um, a bookmark you can see at the top there dated uh, this morning uh, because something happened literally about 45 minutes ago with Google that I found <laughs> out about. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of come back to that. These aren't any in, uh, in, in any particular order, so I'm just kind of going to kind of go through these. It looks like I've got about 21 of them there. Um, and I'm actually going to change this up so we can see all of them so I don't forget anything in particular. <clears throat> so let me start out with kind of maybe some things that people are a little more uh, familiar with, and then we'll kind of move along towards the maybe not so familiar with, um, and then end up with just some uh, resources and, and pointers to where you can find even more uh, stuff that I've stumbled over in researching all of this. So I'm going to switch on over to um, Google. Um, the one thing I want to say here is I am signed into my Google account. Some of the services I'm going to show you, you have to have signed up for. Um, also, some of the kind of memory features that Google has to remember things you've done are if you are signed in. So <clears throat> some of these features may not be available uh, directly to your patrons unless they have their own accounts. Uh, they may not be available to you. Um, at least one thing I'm going to show, um, you still need to be invited by somebody who already has an account. So, But I think it's a really cool service that we'll start playing around with. So I am signed into my account under my Gmail address that you can see up there. And um, the first thing I'm, I'm going to do is I'm going to assume most everybody's familiar with the Google homepage. Um, and you have your Google search and your I'm feeling lucky. But what a lot of people don't realize is there's this wonderful little thing over, link over here on the right called advanced search. And there are a lot of things that Google's starting to do um, around search results options and how to do search that, that people just aren't necessarily uh, familiar with. Now, some of these right off the top are kind of your obvious. If you've done any sort of searching in any sort of online uh, database, you're familiar with you know, all the words, phrase, 
uh, you know, your Boolean operators in here, how many results per page, what language, format types, things like that. But if we scroll down here, they've, they've kind of shrunk this under dates, usage rights, and numeric range and more. You start getting even more options available to such as um, date, um, usage rights, which we'll come back to in a moment, uh, numeric range. I like their example there is uh, $1,500 to $3,000. So if you are searching for a product, you can narrow it down. Um, if uh, you're... You, you want your results to contain a number between X and Y. You can actually do that. Um, save search, uh, on or off. Um, it is pretty much on by default. I'm actually, since I am searching in public in, in for the next 45 minutes, I'm going to turn my safe search on just in case we get maybe some pictures I really shouldn't be uh, showing anybody. Um, <clears throat> One thing I will point out here real quick is this usage rights. And by default, this is not filtered by license. Some of you may have heard me talk about Creative Commons before. This is basically allowing you to limit your search results to materials that have Creative Commons licenses on them that you can use for free. So if you're doing a Google image search, if you're looking for content you want to reuse for something, you know, you can limit your results to free to use or share and get those images back out just like you can with Flickr and know that you're okay reusing that content. I don't want to turn this into a whole copyright rant, which I could easily do, uh, but just want to point that out to you. It is kind of hiding in here and something that you might want to uh, take a look at. Um, the other interesting part under advanced search here is um, page-specific tools. Find pages similar to and find pages that link to. Um, I find these really interesting from two different perspectives, and I'll, I'll take them in reverse order here. Find pages that link to the page, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put in the URL for the Commission's website. And click that search, and what this is going to do is now, these are all pages that have linked back to our website. Now, as you will notice right off the top, a lot of them are our own website. Uh, but then you'll notice here we have links back from One Book One Nebraska, Travel and Librarian, which is my website, a link back from Information Today, NebraskaLibraries.org. So you can look at this as say your website, who's linking to it, or you found a website that you're going, hmm, I wonder if this information is accurate. Well, see if anybody links to it. You know, kind of link back. It can be used as a verification. Um, as to a source because generally people don't link to things that aren't any good. You know, it's kind of a, it's, it's a simple but um, very important concept. Um, the other one is find pages similar to the page. And again, I'll use our website as an example here. And so I found this great resource and I'm wondering if there's any other resources online that are similar to that one. Now in this case, we're kind of a state library. So you'll see here Nebraska Access, Nebraska Library Association, and I'll see reference on Twitter. But then it does start to broad out to UNL Libraries, Nebraska Public Libraries, Lincoln Cities, Omaha, even NET Television. And then we start jumping out here. We've got the Mississippi Library Commission. So you can find one resource and then research and see what other sort of related resources are there available based on the URL? And this doesn't have to be a homepage. This could be a very specific document. You know, you found a report on something. I'm looking for other things that are similar to that report. You can go in and you can do that. So that's just kind of the advanced search. Don't want to spend a lot of time there. Just highlight a couple of those very specific features that are available to you. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at kind of some of their more specific searches that they have available. And one here is Google Images. Now, this is the one I just found out literally this morning that in the next 24 hours, they're going to be changing how image results are displayed. <laughs> okay? It's like, gee, thanks. All right. So <laughs> they knew I'll, you were doing I, it. Yeah, they, they knew I was going to present on this this morning, so they're going to change it. So chances are I'm going to show you what will be the old way come tomorrow morning, and uh, then we'll, we'll go from there. I have a screenshot of what it's supposed to look like in, in the future. So I asked Krista earlier, I said, I'm going to need an image uh, search, and she suggested snow. Now, it's like 35 degrees here. This must be why, why she wants to search for snow. So we're going to go ahead and notice it is providing me with suggestions. I'm just going to do a simple search on snow here. And this is our results list. Now, they've done several very interesting things here that a lot of people haven't noticed. And the first one, which is very obvious, is if you look under each of these results, 
there is a link called Find Similar Images. I noticed that, and I thought that was very cool when they instituted that. Whenever yes, this, this is very cool. So, for example, here we have, uh, you know, some trees with some snow. We kind of have this one. We have a snow leopard here. And so uh, here we've got one. I'll go up to the upper right here. We have this snow with kind of this barn. We've got some sky going on here. And I'm thinking, hey, that's pretty cool. It's close, but it's not exactly what I'm looking for. So I want to find similar images to this one. I click on that link and look at what we've got. This, I, I am just, I'm floored I don't know how by this. this. Works. I mean, it looks at color, it looks at shapes, it, it, it looks at the lines in the image. But as you can see here, I mean, we have different dimensions of the same image from completely different sources. This happens to be a piece of wallpaper, so it, 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 it kind of does that. But as we get far, we've got this one's very similar, but then somebody's gone and added kind of a lake in front of it, a reflection. We've got the mountains. You know, notice in most cases we have the sky, we have some sort of pointy shape. We have ground, we have land, you know, we have trees, we have sky. I think this is really cool. Mm -hmm. Krista, did you have a yes. you comment? Yeah. No, I was just saying there's one in the middle, about the second row. It's another barn in snow. Mm -hmm. So similar to the first one, but only that's the kind of barn I was looking for right. in the snow. Yeah, yeah exactly. I mean, uh, this is, I, 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 I've not had a lot of chance to play with this, but I think it's, it's really, really cool. So I'm going to go back to my original results. And the other thing that kind of carries through in a lot of these, and it's not just in images, it's also in the regular Google search, it's also in Google video search, some other things, is right here we have this link kind of towards the upper right called show options. These are hidden by default until you turn them on. Once you turn them on, and you're, if you're logged into your account, it will remember that you turned them on. And what we can get here for the images is we get this additional list down the left-hand side. And I love this. I've been using this a lot. Especially for, for example, I want medium or large images. You know, I'm looking for wallpaper. Chances are that's going to be large. Now, I don't necessarily agree with their definition of large. Their definition of large is like anything over 1,000 pixels wide or something like this. And sometimes you want a picture that's 12,000 pixels wide, something like that. Um, you can say, I only want icons of snow. Okay, well, here we go. Now, I've just limited my results to icons. Um, now, notice you have lost, at least in the case of icons, the related images in this case, because you have narrowed your results. You can say, I need something exactly 64 by 64 pixels. Okay, well, here we go. Here are our snow results at 64 by 64. Um, and again, I can turn this off by just going back to images. Um, any type. Do you want a face, photo, clip art, or line drawing? Okay. Well, you know, I'm looking for a line drawing of snow. Okay, well, here you go. And it turns out, in this case, most of it seems to be kind of clip art um, versus clip art, which is going to get this sort of thing. Or I'm not sure about face with snow. Well, okay, here we go. Oh, so Brittany Those Snow, Tony snow. snow. Exactly. Snow pictures with faces in it. I mean, I, I, I look, just look at this and I, I, I am so impressed by the computational power behind this that makes this actually work. And then, and I'll go back to any type here, then you can go, well, you know what, um, I'm, I'm not sure I want to do a yellow colored snow picture. Um, <laughs> I, probably not. Let, let's avoid that. Well, let, let's go with, with, okay, I want snow pictures, but like with black in it. I, I'm, I'm not sure this is the great. Black okay, and white. black and white images, black snow, I guess is the name of a, either a movie or an album, it looks like here. Um, you know, if I go to red, let's see, ah, I get a... Uh, uh, autumn and winter, uh, you know. So you can, again, narrow your results by color. And and I just, this right here is just completely opened up. So I want color and I want face and I only want um, icon images. Okay, well, there you go. I mean, you can just totally, totally narrow it down in a couple of clicks without too much trouble. And again, then we just have down here, you'll see there's across the top, kind of images, red face icon. I also have down here in the bottom left reset options that will take me back to my original results. So yeah, I've done that color thing before too. That yeah, pretty amazing. It, it is pretty nice. Um, what I really like is like a full color wheel. Well, I'll actually take that back. Specific yeah. color. Um, oh no, there isn't a color wheel yet. So you know where I really want this mm -hmm. shade of green. Yeah. Um, but you know, hey, they're working on it. Okay, so let me go back to my list, which is going to take me a second because I didn't open a new tab. Uh, there we go. I'll open new tabs from now on. All right, let's uh, now 
keeping with images, this is something that's kind of in what they call their experimental view. And this is called the Google, Google Image Swirl. And what this will do is, this is from Google Labs, which, which I'll, I'll have a link to a little later. And so let's try that snow. Oh, actually, um, enter query above. Okay. A couple weeks ago, this was only available on the, the examples they had on the screen. So we're going to try our own search here. We'll stick with snow. And it looks like, yay, it's going to work. Now, what this has done is this has given you the results, but notice behind each one there's kind of some other results kind of hiding in here. They've kind of grouped these images by similar images. Okay? And so I'm going to pick this one with, with a car covered in snuff, and uh, you know, I, I understand how that works. And what we've kind of done now, if anybody uh, in the audience has seen like Aqua Browser or some of the other visual-oriented search engines, what it's trying to do is it's try to draw comparisons visually between these different images. So we can see here, well, this one is kind of pretty similar to this one. And, that, and then that one's going to be kind of similar to this one, so it rearranges that. Um, and then finally, you know, we've gotten to, to this guy here standing in the snow going, wow, it's really deep here. <laughs> okay. And you can see this kind of move around. I don't know how it, the, the moving on our screen is very, very smooth. I don't know how well it's translating across, across to you guys. Um, but yeah, this is called Google Image Swirl. So if you're a little more of a visual searcher and you want a relationship between the photos, you can, you can kind of look at it that way. Now, to, to end talking about uh, searching for images here, let me go back up to what I found this morning. Um, what Google is changing is their basic image search results in the next 24 hours are going to kind of look like this right here in the middle of your screen. In other words, it's going to say, okay, we think we found the perfect photo picture for you. And then we're going to say, okay, that's it. And then we're going to kind of put the related ones off to the side events. Um, this was literally announced uh, yesterday at 4.30 in the afternoon Pacific time, um, and they said in the next 24 hours. So actually, this should be up and running by the end of today. <laughs> uh, um, thank you, Google, for waiting until after I presented it. Actually, I'm, I'm torn. I would have rather shown you the new version uh, and had to, to, to kind of move through that and figure it out on the fly than to say, well, here's how it works now, but by the end of today, it'll probably work differently. Thank you, Google. But, you know, it's got to change at some point. Yeah. So, okay. <clears throat> a few other kinds of searches I want to talk about um, briefly. Uh, Google Video. Um, and, again, I've just uh, opened a new tab. Google Video I find is very interesting. Um, it searches not just Google Video, which really doesn't upload much anymore. Uh, it searches YouTube because Google owns YouTube. But it also searches other websites such as Dailymotion, um, PP2GTV, um, lots of other sources. So you don't necessarily, if you go to YouTube and search, you're only searching YouTube content. Use Google Video Search, you're searching content across multiple uh, uh, sources. So again, I'm going to search snow. Why the heck not? Let's, let's stick with a theme. And uh, so we get YouTube, we get Daily Motion. There is going to be a lot of YouTube because that's where a lot of video. Hulu, Vio. Uh. Meta Cafe. So there are lots of different sources. And, and what I find really cool about this is it will then actually play right here in most cases. So let's, let's, go, let's try the Hulu one, actually. I'm going to click on Hulu, and it should load up over here on the right-hand side of the screen and actually start playing. Now, it probably won't play well. I won't actually play it because of the, the streaming we're doing uh, to the audience here. Um, but it has that, and then below that it has related videos. So you can scroll through this, you can play them right here, you don't necessarily need to go off to another website, although I have seen that happen. I, uh, that's why I tested Hulu, because mm -hmm. sometimes you'll click on it and say, we're sorry, you can't actually play it here, you actually have to go to that website uh, to play it. Um, so, and then for right here, you can email this video, and you can see related videos, and you can watch it bigger. You can embiggen it. Uh, as, as it's sometimes called. And then we have related searches down here in your page through, and it has a thing about Google Alerts, which we'll come back to in a little bit. So, you know, Google Video Search, kind of simple. And again, options, show options. Here we go. Do you want the, the list view, the grid view? What's the duration? How recent is the video? Sorted by date. Um, so if you're looking for news reports on a particular topic, sorting by date would be great. Get the latest news sources that it goes through. 
Again, turn those options on. There's a lot of new stuff hiding under there. Okay, back to my list. Check to make sure. Uh, we have a question here. Let me look. No. Uh, nope. Okay, that's a question from earlier. Okay, Google Scholar. It's another one of Google searches. Um, in this case, for those of you who are concerned about the um, crud that people are finding on the internet, um, try Google Scholar. This is literally going to limit you to scholarly, um, peer-reviewed sorts of resources. Um, they just added uh, legal opinions uh, have been added. I think federal case law going back decades has recently been been added. I hear so um, just for well, let's do it. Let's 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 go for. Uh, let's go. It says new find the laws that govern us. Read more. Oh, read more. Okay, so yeah, they've they've added case law uh, very recently. I'm not sure we'll find any case law under snow, but uh, let's go ahead and try to do a snow search here. Um, and uh, the SF36 health theme survey, uh, organizational strategy. Oh, in this case, we have Charles C. Snow. Uh. Um, probably in this case, snow is going to be a lot of author names. That would be my guess. Uh, but you can limit to articles and patents, uh, legal opinions. You have an advanced search. Here's federal cases. You can include citations or include at least summaries. Um, what's really nice, I don't do a lot of scholarly research, uh, just kind of not my area, but if you'll notice here under each result, you have number of citations, related articles, and different versions of the article. So, you know, maybe if it was published in multiple locations, um, maybe you're only going to be able to get it through one of the online databases you subscribe to. You might want to look at the different versions and say, hey, we subscribe to that database. We can probably get it through here. Citations, um, I you know, don't want to actually look at all 4,000 citations. <laughs> but in this case, here are links to the 4,000 results um, that link back to that original article. And in this case, it even tells you if it's maybe from Google Books or if it is a book. Um, what, where is it coming from? Duke, uh, PSU, UVT.nl. Um, you know, international resources has your citation where it's coming for, from. In this case, JSTOR. If you have access to that, if you're an academic, um, so Google Scholar can get really, really uh, good results, really focused results here. Uh, notice there are not um, options in this case. They haven't integrated the options into Google Scholar, but there is an advanced search and there is a Scholar preferences section, which, uh, in the interest of time, I won't go into in too much detail. Okay, um, one more, I think, uh, actual type on you before I get into some of the other really interesting things they've done, is we have Google Patents. Um, so full text patent searches. Um, I, to be honest, think it's a lot better than you going to USPTO.gov um, and doing their search. Um, and we'll stick with our snow theme here. This is completely Krista's fault, by the way, because uh, I asked her earlier. Oh, it's cold coming in. Yes. <laughs> um, so uh, we have our, in this case, the options are already there. Cover view. Uh, I kind of like cover view uh, because you can uh, pull up, uh, you know, what's, oh, yeah, looks, you know, the, the draw is snowboarding and some of this other stuff. I have absolutely no idea what any of this has. Snow shovel design. All right. The extendable snow shovel. Let's look at the extendable snow shovel. Um, so we bring that up. We can read the patent. We can download it as a PDF. Uh, we can uh, cross-reference by citations, when it was filed, when the patent was issued. You can keyword search within this patent, mm -hmm. which I think is really cool. You get the abstract, the drawing, the description, the claims, um, what other patents reference this one. So completely cross-referenced, um, and a lot of them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what is it claiming? There are the drawings. I, I just, I think this is, you know, amazing, pulling that right up. There's your, your full detailed uh, drawing. And then you can clip this. You can link to it. You can post feedback to it. Um, I think this is the most ridiculous patent I've ever seen. <laughs> Trust me, there's some of them in there that oh, are yeah. quite amusing. So, <clears throat> you know, you got, you got to do a patent search. Jeez, check out Google Patents first, I would say. All right. So those are some of the kind of specific searches that they have. And I, I kind of want to now kind of go off into the the more interesting realm of, of what you can do with Google. And some of these I can't actually demonstrate, I can just talk about. And the first one I'll talk about here is Goog411. 
and I will not actually play that video. Um, there's a couple things you can do here. Um, I've, Chris and I both have given presentations on how you can do things on your mobile phone. Um, and one of the things you can do is you can actually text Google. Um, you, you text uh, G-O-O-G-L, whatever that number works out to. I can't remember it off the top of my head. And it will actually text you back um, uh, results. So you can say like pizza 68522. And it, will, it will text you back if you have a text plan. Um, going the next step up, um, on, on my phone, I can actually, my phone knows where I am. And so I can just hit a button and I can say pizza. And it will return a Google result of pizza based on where I'm physically standing at the moment. I mean, that just like totally impresses me. But let's just say you have a phone <laughs> or a cell phone without a texting plan. You can actually call 1-800-GOOG-411 and do Google searches by voice. Um, and then it will, it will actually offer to dial through for you to that actual business. Um, so something I can't really demonstrate here, um, I, you know, maybe if we test it, but yeah, next time around. But you can actually just call Google. Okay? And I just want to pause here for a moment and force you to think about the concept of they can call Google instead of calling the library. <laughs> um, you know, I like it or not, just think about that one. You know, maybe you don't want to tell lots of people about this. I don't know. Well, you see how they're promoting it, though. It's connecting with local businesses, right. basically. Like, and you can see the example. I want to know a local pizza place. Mm -hmm. So here's where I am. I want pizza. Cool, now I can order my pizza. Yeah. Not the kind of thing you call the library to do. Maybe yeah. to find out what the pizza places are. But. Yeah, I mean, true. I, there, there, there are different scenarios. But I just think the fact that you can now call Google is, <laughs> is, 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 is vaguely impressive. Um, it means they've got some money. Okay. Now, speaking of calling Google, this is one, this, this, this just totally goes into the next realm. And, and this is the one thing where um, you can't just sign up for this. You, you have to be invited by somebody who has uh, invitations to give at this point. It's called Google Voice. And this is Google going the other direction. Um, I'm, we're going to show you my inbox here. I'm going to kind of talk about how this works, and you can read those messages, and, and only one of them is a you know, real live message. The other ones where I was playing around with it. But there's a couple ways you can look at this. Method number one is if you, you sign up for Google Voice and it gives you a phone number. So I actually have a Google Voice phone number. Okay. What I can then do is I can start giving people that phone number. Say, call me at my Google Voice number. Okay, it's just a regular phone number. What I can then do in Google Voice is say things like, okay, um, during 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., if somebody calls that number, please automatically forward it to my desk in my office. But on the evenings and weekends, please forward it to my house phone or my cell phone. Or I can say, you know what, at, at, but um, on the weekends, please have it ring my house phone and my cell phone. Because you might be out. Because I might be out. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Then what I can do is I can set up things based on who's calling me. So I can say, well, it's Krista. She's a coworker. If she calls my cell phone, you know what, just send her directly to voicemail. <laughs> probably work I don't want to deal with it. <laughs> right, yeah, it's probably work I don't want to deal with. But if it's my wife, please ring every phone I have <laughs> because she's probably trying to get a hold of me. And then the outgoing voicemail message, I can set up one voicemail message that Krista hears as my coworker, but a different voicemail message that my wife hears if I don't answer the phone. That's pretty cool. Now, let me take this one step further. <laughs> what I have done is because really I'm really established with my cell phone number. It's my only phone I have. I don't want to give people other phone numbers. But what I've done is I've set up, and you can do this on any cell phone. You don't have to have one. In fact, you can do this on any, um, any phone, I think, even a landline. If you have a Google Voice account, you can have Google Voice be your voicemail. So, you can, so if you were to call my cell phone, Google Voice would take over, not Verizon's voicemail. Google Voice will take over and allow you to leave me a message in Google Voice. But then what Google Voice does, as you can see right here, is it will transcribe that message you left me into text. 
and I can play it back right here. But what I can then also do is have it email me that transcription or send me a text message of that voicemail. So if you were to call me on my cell phone and I didn't answer, it would say, thank you for calling this person, please leave a message. And you would leave a message and you would hang up. Google would transcribe what you said, sometimes quite well, sometimes not so well. I will admit it's not perfect. Right? And then send me a text message of the message you left. So I don't actually have to call my voicemail anymore. Your message gets turned into a text message and I get it on my phone. Or an email. Or both. And the words that are in gray, by the way, are the words it wasn't really sure of. <laughs> that's, that's what the, 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 the text is going on there. And so far only one person has actually left me a voicemail since I turned this on and that was <laughs> Katya there. So. Um, you know, eventually somebody will leave me a voicemail where, like, I can't show it in public. I don't know, I guess, you know, pick up milk on the way home. I don't know. Um, so Google Voice is, like, so really, really cool. Um, and I think I'm out of invites. No, I have two invites left. Hmm. I'm going to throw this out here. The first two people who are interested who email me will get the invites. Okay? So, um, you know, if you, you know, you now you have to figure out my email address. <laughs> of course, it's already been on the screen. So, you know, email me anywhere. First two people, I'll give you a Google Voice in invite if you want to play around with this. I think it's really, really, really cool. All right. Let's go back to my list here. And I'm just going to check the room for questions. Uh, nope. Okay. No questions at this point. Um, back to my list. What else do we have to play with here? Um... Okay, let's talk about uh, Google Alerts. Google Alerts, I think, are pretty cool. They've been around for a while. And what you can do is you can enter a search term. So let's say you're interested in um, snow is probably not a good example here. Um, <clears throat> you're something in a little more specific, um, let's say, gout. Okay, because, you know, I'll admit it, I periodically suffer from gout. And so I want to get, you know, kind of the latest results on gout. Um, now I can say, do I want uh, a new search, blog search, a web search, a comprehensive, meaning everything search, a video search, or a groups search? Um, well, you know what? Let's, let's do news, okay? I wish I could do scholar in this case. That would yeah. be pretty cool, but not available through this. And it says, okay, how often do you want to check? Do you want to check uh, as it happens, instantaneous, once a day or once a week? Well, you know, I, I'm thinking once a week will be fine. And then uh, where do I want this delivered to? Uh, do I want it delivered to uh, my uh, Gmail address? Do I want it delivered to my work email address, which is now out of date? This is something you do in your Google account is you set up multiple email addresses. Or I can even get it as an RSS feed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, not wanting to get into RSS too much, let's just say, you know, send it to Gmail and I go create alert. And so what I've got here is I have set up some different alerts. And here I have uh, my gout alerts. It's a new search. It's going to be delivered via email. Um, and it will check once a week. Okay. A few others of these ones uh, are somewhat self-explanatory and maybe not so much. But for example, this one, here's my ego search. Um, so if Google comes up with any sort of uh, search result that mentions me, um, I will automatically uh, be no notified as it happens, and I'm going to view it as a feed. I'm getting it in my Google Reader. Uh, um, I was doing a uh, talk in Las Vegas uh, this last summer, so I set up one of these. And at this point, I could probably just kind of delete that. So I'm going to like check and say delete, and now it's gone because I don't really need that one anymore. Right. Um, so if you have things that you are wanting to keep up to date on or um, doing research. I mean, let me, an example, I know we have one or two academic librarians in the uh, room. Uh, you know, if you are a, a subject liaison or a liaison for a particular uh, um, member of the faculty of the campus and you know they are researching a particular topic, set up a Google alert on their topic, mm -hmm. you get notified and then whenever you find something new you think they'd be interested in, you send them an email saying, hey, I found this new article for you. They will love you. <laughs> yes. 
I mean, really, I, you know, set this up. It, it, other than the maybe five minutes it will take to do in the first place, it will just start showing up in your inbox or via an RSS feed, and then all you got to do is just forward it off to that person, and you are set. And they know now you are the person who is aware of what they're researching and can find the information they're looking for. And, you know, if you can find it and send it to them in 10 minutes after it happens, it, chances are they were in a class teaching and they didn't know about it yet. They yeah. found out because of you. So just think about that one. Okay, so let me go back to my list. And um, talk about a few other things. Um, here's one. This is the Google News timeline. I discovered this two days ago. Um, so I haven't had a chance to play with it. But basically it's a... Uh, different view of what's going on in Google News from different sources than if you just went to news.google.com. Right. So this is another one of their labs feature, as you can see up here. In other words, they're not really marketing it. It's kind of there. If you go to Google Labs, you'll find it, but um, not uh, totally uh, there. So different view. You can it, It's pulling in Google News, Time Magazine, and Wikipedia. You can add additional things. You can kind of change the size as to how much is viewed on the screen. You can kind of see how news is progressing. Um, play around with this one. I really don't have a lot else to say about it because I, I haven't had a chance to really dive into it myself quite yet. Okay. Um, this reminds me of one other option. Um, and so I'm going to – let me show you Google Labs real quick, and then we'll go into the experimental search. Um, Google Labs is found at www.googlelabs.com, and this is where you can find the image swirl. This is where you can find the news. Um, some of this stuff, um, I'm going to talk about social search in just a sec, um, fast flip, Android. There, there's some really oddball things in here. There's some projects that they're really trying to work out. For example, this one, Related Links, I've kind of looked into that where it's a way to, say, on my blog, embed a little piece of code that whenever you view a blog post, it automatically shows you up what Google thinks are related links to that post that I wrote. Um, so it's not really searching. It's kind of a, a, a way to, to make your website a little more interactive, cross referency sort of thing. So, you know, poke around in Google Labs. There, there's some interesting stuff in there. Um, one that's here that I'm also going to show you in another place is called Google Social Search. And, and this is something I've started playing around with. And this is available by going to the Google Experimental Labs. So this isn't even labs. This is experimental labs. This is, the, this is the really out there, like they came up with this last week sort of stuff. And what you do is you have to actually join the experiment to get the feature turned on. So I'm going to go ahead and click join this experiment, which is weird because I thought I already had. And it says, okay, you've now joined this experiment. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open, I'm going to go to google.com. And I'm going to do my snow search again. This is just a general Google query. And I'm going to click show options. Now, one of the things that you, I have now that I didn't have before is this link called social. Okay. And what this is going to do is it's only going to show me results from people in my social circle online that Google knows about. So people who I, blogs I subscribe to in Google Reader. Um, friends that are in my contact list in Gmail. And so it's only going to show me results from kind of people I quote unquote know. So here is the Backblaze blog, which is something I follow. Uh, Scruffy Nerf, I actually don't know who that is. Michael Gorlick's blog, people I follow in Flickr. Um, another blog I follow, here's nebraskalibraries.org because I follow that blog, Josh Neff, who I know and follow his blog. So it's, 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 this is super experimental. But the idea is, is you're looking for information on a topic, what are my friends saying about this topic? Mm -hmm. What are they reading? What are they, what do they know about? And you'll see kind of the, 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 the different people that are listed here kind of down the left in this case. Okay. Really experimental, I think really interesting though. Yeah. This is that social web overlapping with search. Uh, now I want to stress, this is pretty much only in Google stuff. Uh, but actually Flickr is owned by Yahoo. 
oh, but I'm subscribing to the Flickr feed in Google Reader. Uh, so that's how it knows about a Flickr source. So, so you can bring in other things that are not Google. Only right. You, you, would, you would do it through Google Reader. That, yeah. Exactly. So, so, you know, Google's trying to build this ecosystem here. And, and, and I, 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 things are going through my head like, am I giving Google too much information? Uh, Which leads me to the next thing. This is perfect. There is, and I think this is back up here at the top, uh, the Google Dashboard. Okay. The Google Dashboard is, as long as you're logged into your account, it lists everything Google knows about you. This is dangerous. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm kind of putting, oh, and it's asking me to verify that I'm me, even. Uh, and so it says, okay, uh, so according to your Google account, your name is, your nickname is, and here are your email addresses. You can see websites that are authorized to access this. Um, I've set up five Google Alerts, and my most recent one is on Gout that I did this morning. Um, I have an analytics account, which is a way for Google to track website statistics. It's trying to get stuff from Blogger. It's trying to get stuff from Calendar. Have I bought anything through Google Checkout? Have I set up any custom searches? Am I using Google Docs? Um, and, and I've got that. I've got 302 entries in my contacts. Now, I can actually see all this data, but, you know, Pardon me if I don't actually get to a uh, particular, you know, what's going up with Gmail? Have I done anything in Google Health? Have I done anything with iGoogle? Google Latitude? I haven't even talked about some of this stuff. There's a lot but of things this there, is yeah. this is like literally, you know, when when I've done things, um, Google Latitude. Um, this is where it thinks I am right now, and it's pretty darn close. Um, if I hit a button on my phone, it would tell me. Um, I've set up my phone so that Google knows where I am at all times, and I can actually then allow my friends to see that information through something called Google Latitude. Have I uploaded anything to Google, uh, their Picasso web albums? I mean, this is just, how many things am I reading in, in Reader? How many contacts do I have in Google Talk? How many tasks do I have? Google Voice, YouTube. This this is an interesting sort of all in one place. What does Google know about you? Assuming you have an account, it's it's nice if it's you. It might make you think about what Google does and doesn't know about you. I kind of leave that up to you. Um, along with that is the view your profile, and this is another thing you can set up if you have a Google account. Um, this is kind of an interesting way to say, you know what, I want a website that's about me that I can link to for people, so like if they want more information, but I don't want to actually go set up a whole website. Mm. So you can set up a Google profile. Um, some people use LinkedIn for this. Um, you know, I always encourage if you set up a Twitter account, you should give a URL to link back to, to find out more information about you. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, um, I don't have a website. Okay, well, go set up a Google profile. And you can, you can control all of this. You know, you don't have to have it say where you've been recently. You don't have to have it pull in recent Flickr photos. You don't have to say where you grew up or schools you've attended. This is completely customizable by you. Right. So just kind of one more of those services that are available. Okay, what else I've got here? I'm kind of running towards the end. Um... Okay, let me talk about just some resources where you can find out more about Google. And the first one I'll pull up here is the official Google blog. Um, you can subscribe to this. You can read it as you see fit. You can get it via email if you even want to. And this is where they post things like, hey, we're going to update image search in the next 24 hours. And hey, we're going to be giving a presentation at this conference. And hey, you should vote for us in this contest. Um, so we pull this down here, and they're talking about some sort of, you know, vote for us. Um, here is the blog post from yesterday about uh, new pictures. Um, uh, Google model your town competition. So really, you know, if you're just trying to keep up on what's going on with Google, you know, maybe you should subscribe to the blog. Towns in 3D. Towns in 3D using Google Earth. Something I would not try to show over a video <laughs> conference. I just talk about computing power. Um, okay, more Google products. You can get to this, basically, if you go to the Google homepage, then there's a more link, and then at the bottom of that, there's like, show me everything. 
This is Google's official list of all of Google stuff. Okay, so here's where you can get alerts and the blog search, which I didn't even talk about, and Google Code and Google Labs and Blogger and Gmail and Google Finance and Google Health and all of this. This is kind of their official list. Okay, and notice it's you know maybe if you print it out a page and a half long. Okay, well let me show you another one, and this one I found two weeks ago. Look, there's a podcast called This Week in Google. And it's other people talking about what's going on with Google. Google. Well, this guy put up a complete and total list of all Google services in a spreadsheet. Wow. And some of this stuff I didn't even know about. Okay. Um, and I'd never heard of. And sometimes there's an audience list. So, you know, if you're a publisher or if you're an advertiser, if you're a developer, um, when it launched. Does it cost any money? A link to the help, a link to Q&A, ideas for how you could use it. Is there a blog associated with that particular product? If we were able to scroll off to the right, which I can't for a moment, is there a Twitter account for that product? So if you want to follow them on Twitter, and even some that are closed, like Google Answers doesn't exist anymore, so they've, they've shut that down. There is, if I scroll all the way down here, Remember how long that list was on the official yeah. Google page? Um, we are currently at, I'm almost to the bottom. This list has gone up. Okay. Um, 344 different products and projects that Google is working on or have been closed. There's not a lot of closed ones. Okay. There, did you know they're working, they've got Google Chrome, which is the browser. They've launched early versions of their operating system, which I played with. It's pretty cool. Um, They've announced a new programming language that Google has created. I mean, they are doing more than just search. There is a lot of stuff in here to play with. Did you know that Google's offering free Wi-Fi at a lot of airports this holiday season? Yes, I did see that story I see. On, on the news. There you go. So, I mean, there is just web history, web elements, um, Google Video, some of these you may be part of. The U.S. Puzzle Championship Contest. They must be a sponsor. Um, TV ads. I, there is just, just look at this list and play. I mean, it's just it's unbelievable the stuff that is hiding here. Stock quotes. Uh, I like the ones uh, Google Squared Experimental. Um, and by the way, there there there's now an early beta version of their complete. They're they're working on completely revamping how plain old Google search works, and it's hiding in here somewhere. Um, and there is a way to turn that on and turn that off so through, through cookies. It's some weird thing. And you can force your, your Google interface to now use the new interface that's coming early next year. Um, I mean, there is so much stuff hiding in this list that I think you should take a look at. Some of this stuff has to do with just cell phones. Oh, here's the Google SMS. So I was mentioning earlier you can text message Google and get search results that way. It's 466453 is what you do. Um, Google Sky, they run a wiki service called SideWiki. Um, yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's just just play with this list. I, 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 it's an amazing list to look at. I've just scratched the surface. Some of the stuff I talked about uh, in this session, I found using this list. I, I had no idea they even exist. So, and he's constantly keeping that up to date. So. Um, and we have some time. I'll open up for questions. I did forget to mention here, there is the Google blog search, which is blogsearch.google.com, and this is only searching content from blogs. So if you hate blogs, don't ever go here. <laughs> but, you know, blogs including things like, you know, Anderson Cooper 360 blog. Mm -hmm. So it's not just, you know, Joe Schmo, what I had for breakfast. Mm -hmm. Here's the CNN political ticker. I mean, and you can narrow it down to politics and world and business and technology and video games and movies and whatever. So it is just the fact that all of the results are from specifically just blogs, which shows you how much impact as an information source blogs are. So, okay. all right, blah, 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 I've been talking a lot. <laughs> um, any questions? We've got a few minutes left. Yep. If you have any questions, you can go ahead and say so in the questions section of your GoToWebinar interface. Um, we can un yeah, unmute you also if you want, if you have a microphone, so you can let us know that. Let me see the mouse. Okay. 
those question marks mean they have questions? Um, yeah, let's see here. Oh, okay. okay there we were questions. questions. Okay, I think you need to know. click on them. Yeah. Let's, let's go in order that we got them. In the option to search for pages or images similar to, it determines what similar means. Um, in my experience, they're looking at things like color, shapes, um, the lines in the image. Um, I'm sure there's an about page that gets a little more specific. Um, it's kind of one of those things where um, I, I use the snow example, but the Eiffel Tower example, I, it, it, it works off of things like if you go to, you search Eiffel Tower, you get uh, a lot of pictures of the Eiffel Tower during the day, but then you find one that's really nice of the Eiffel Tower at night. Mm -hmm. Click on similar images and you'll get all sorts of pictures of the Eiffel Tower at night. It, it just kind of, it looks at the colors, it looks at the shapes, it looks at the lines and says, hey, I think these images are similar. Um, I gotta admit, I hate to say this because I like to know how things work, but when things work, I don't generally ask why. <laughs> it's kind of like, I'm just kind of looking at that going, wow, okay, I'm impressed. Mm. If you're really interested, try to find like a really weird image. Search for something that, you know, completely abstract and, and click similar images and see what sort of results you get. I, I, I think it's just, just really cool. Uh, where and how does one sign up for a Google account? Okay, um, yeah, I can show that. Let me let me bring that up here. Give me a sec to kind of get things out of the way on the screen. If I just go to Google.com, and in the upper right hand corner, right now it says sign out. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, it now says sign in, and so you have basically username, password, and down below it says create an account now. Now, if you already have a Gmail account, a Google Calendar account, um, a YouTube account, um, any a Blogger account, chances are you already have a Google account. Some so sort of, any any kind of Google related account counts. Should count, yes. Now, like if you have a Blogger account from several years ago, it might not completely translate. There's a few things, but if you have an account with any Google service try signing into Google with that username and password, especially if the username is like a Gmail address, that pretty much guarantees it, and that should work. If it doesn't, it will say, we're sorry that doesn't work, would you like to sign up? Or, in the case of Blogger, it might say, would you like to merge the two accounts? And you can follow through with that. So I think that that's, um, try it if you think you've already got one. If not, just go to the Google homepage, click on sign in, and then create an account now. It's the, the simplest way to do it. But I would try an existing account first so you don't end up with multiple accounts. Yeah. That gets really, really messy. Mm. Uh, what is the cost for these Google accounts, Jan asks? Uh, free. Now, particular services might cost. Um, for example, going back to Google Voice for a moment, um, you can actually use Google Voice to make phone calls mm. to landline phone numbers. That costs money. Um, but if you just call another Google Voice user, it's, I think it's free if you go Google Voice to Google Voice, or mm -hmm. if you just use Google Voice to receive messages, things like that, that doesn't mm -hmm. cost either. Um, so there are some particular examples that cost money, um, but you know, if you want Google to run ads for you, that would be something that will cost you some money, potentially, because you have to pay for the ads. Right. Um, but a Google account in and of itself, most of this is free. Mm -hmm. Now, it's free because they're collecting lots of information about you. Okay, <laughs> so you're giving, giving them something. It's right, just that's, not money. that's the cost. Um, you can think of it as like you know discount cards at uh, grocery stores. Mm -hmm. Great example. Um, okay, yes, you might get a discount. It's free to sign up, but they're collecting information about your shopping habits. I don't want to make you paranoid, but that is a legitimate concern, and you need to decide how comfortable you are with that information uh, getting to Google. Yep. Um, I'm actually using something called Google Health. Mm. A lot of people have an issue with this one. Mm. I've actually linked it to my Walgreens prescriptions account, Ooh. and it will track my medications for me. But I've decided I'm okay with that. Now, I, I've taken like one medication in the last year, so I'm not, <laughs> I, I'm not on any regular drugs. I'm not on you know, anything like that but then I can go through and I can log when I've gone to doctor's appointments and I've got all that in one place. 
I've read Google's privacy statement. I'm comfortable with it when it comes to Google Help. A lot of people, though, just think that's going a little too far. It's up to you. Yeah. Right. Um, and our last question yeah. is a comment. Thank, Thank you, you, Janet. And Excellent so, information. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, Michael. appreciate that. Um, I did unmute everybody. Um, if you have a microphone and you want to ask a question or make a comment or something, um, you are all unmuted. If you do have one, feel free. Anybody out there? Feel the need to say anything? Now I have a Pink Floyd song running through my head. Thank you. <laughs> <clears throat> and I hope I'm sharing that with all of you. <laughs> I think we're good. Pretty quiet. Okay. Um, if there's no other questions right now, I think we can wrap it up. Um, you do know where to contact Michael if you do have anything else you want to know about it. And we also encourage you, obviously, to explore all of these sites, the things that he went to, and the pages, and all the other Google information. Um, like you said, this is on his delicious account right now. We will be adding it to the commission's account where we put all of our links for all of our Encompass Live sessions as well. So you'll have multiple places to go to to get it. When the recording is announced, I'll have it linked to the commission's account with all of these. Uh, so thank you very much for attending this um, this week. And hopefully join you, you'll join us next week when we will be... Um, talking about um, using American Fact Finder for mining the U.S. Census for information about your com community, doing some planning and research on your local um, area. So. How's that? Oh, yep. you passed the mouse. Um, thank you, Rita. You're welcome. We hope it was um, helpful to you. And I think we are right. good to go. Okay. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.